Hey guys, it's Harleywood, welcome back. All right, today we're gonna take a look at a product from a manufacturer that I have not worked with before. And you already saw it in the video title, it's from Ace Beam. Today we're gonna take a look at the L35. And this little guy comes in at 5,000 lumens. That is a really cool reflector, by the way. I haven't seen one like this. Now, price-wise, this guy comes in pretty competitive. At the time of filming this video, it's right at $99. And most lights from other manufacturers that are in that four or 5,000 plus lumen range typically come in 129, 149, 199 in some cases. So this one is actually very competitively priced and it comes with all the standard accessories you would expect. I'll get those on the tabletop here in a second. But before we do that, let's go over the lumen levels and the operation. First, let's give you a little bit closer look at it. So it's got some really nice knurling right there on the head of the light. The body has a little bit of knurling on it. This is a one inch tube. So if you did want to mount this as a weapon light, you could, and there is a pressure pad option for it. There is a tail cap there. It takes a 21700 battery that is included. Nice design. All right, let's go over the lumen levels, runtime, candela, all that stuff. I'm gonna put it up on the screen here. You can see all of it there. I'm gonna focus on the lumen levels. So turbo is 5,000 lumens. High is 1,500 lumens. Mid two is 650. Mid one is 200. Low is 70. Moonlight is one lumen, which is actually pretty good for a light this size. Most of them do 10 or 30, and I think that's just too high for a moonlight mode. And then there is a strobe mode of 1650 lumens, and there you can see all the associated run times and candela levels. Now there's two versions of this light. The one that I have here is the Cree XHP 70. 0.2 P4 version, all right? There is also what they call their Lattice Power P70 version. Has less lumens, but quite a bit more candela, all right? And if you haven't seen my video on candela versus lumens, if a light has high candela, that means it focuses that, that beam much more tightly, all right? If it has very low candela, but a lot of lumens, it means it's more floody, all right? It's gonna throw that, that light out in a wider area. This one here is kind of a good balance of the two. It's gonna have a decent throw. So the throw on turbo is 480 meters, not bad. And that candela is gonna give you lots of spill. Let's go over what it comes with. Obviously the flashlight, you're gonna get a 5100 amp hour 21700 battery. You're going to get your pack with your lanyard, your replacement tail cap button, and some extra O-rings. And I'll go over that in just a second. You're going to get your USB-C charging cable, and the battery is directly chargeable via this USB-C. I love that a lot of manufacturers are switching to USB-C, and I haven't seen one of these before. This has an additional plug on the side, so if you wanted to plug in another accessory or USB device, you could certainly do that. It's gonna come with your kind of tactical ring as they like to call these, all right? It's gonna sit right in here and it will come installed with that. I removed it, all right? I don't typically run these. And if you wanna run a lanyard, the lanyard only works with this tactical ring. You can see the loop right there. And lastly, your holster. It's a pretty run of the mill holster, all right? I feel like a lot of these manufacturers are probably using the same vendor to make these. Um, even the logoing, you know, with this little tab right here is pretty consistent across most of the manufacturers. And it does have a pocket clip, and I air quoted that because this is quite big. Um, I don't see a lot of guys pocket carrying this necessarily, but I do also like the fact that you can use the pocket clip without the tactical ring. There's a lot of manufacturers who make it in such a way where the tactical ring kind of locks down tabs on the pocket clip. This one can be used with or without the ring. Operation on this is pretty standard. I like the way they do it. This is my preferred way, all right? So you click to turn the light on, click and hold to cycle through the modes, all right? Again, it's totally personal preference, but I don't like the ones where you have to click and hold to turn the light on. On this one, you click and hold to access moonlight, but a lot of other manufacturers, you actually have to click and hold just to enter into the light modes. Uh, Phoenix comes to mind. Not really my preferred way, but again, just a 100% personal preference. The tail cap button is direct access to turbo mode, all right? So it jumps right into turbo. If you half press the tail cap button, it's momentary, okay? If you triple click, or excuse me, double click, it goes into turbo on the barrel button. If you triple click, it goes into strobe mode. And again, when the light is off, click and hold and direct access to moonlight. I like that. I like when the light's off and you can click and hold to directly access moonlight mode and it has a lockout mode. If you press and hold for three seconds, it's gonna go into moonlight. You saw it turned on there. And now you saw that the moonlight mode blinked 
and now when I click, the light does not turn on, okay? To unlock it, click and hold for three seconds again. You can see it flashed and now it's unlocked again. And as you can see, it does also have a memory mode. And around the side over here is your battery status indicator. All right, so if the light is green, the battery is greater than 30%. If it's solid red, it's between 10 and 30%. And if the red light is flashing, it's below 10%. All right, here's the three lights that we're gonna compare. So the ACE beam is there in the middle. We're gonna do the Thrunite TT10 coming in at 3,700 lumens, as well as the Claris XT21X coming in at 4,000 lumens. Um, when I have to pick something, I have to pick something that's comparable in size, candela, lumens, like there's this, there's this blend that I try to do. I don't really have a lot of lights in the five, 6,000 lumen range, okay? So yes, these are both lower, but I wanna show you what a light that is smaller with less lumens can do and a tighter reflector, as well as a light that's bigger with a comparable, although still somewhat smaller reflector. So let's take them out back and see how they do. All right, let's try this again. I filmed this whole segment without turning on my lavalier mic. So here we go. Here is the ACE beam. If you're not familiar with my channel, that barn is 61 yards from here, all right? And back in the dark spot back there, you can see pretty easily two green splotches back there. Those are steel targets at 101 yards. And you, if you had a quick eye, you just saw the cat on the right side of the screen there. All right, take this up in the tree, keep going, going, going. There's the bottom of the spill. It just came into the bottom of the viewport of the camera. Take it back down, 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 down. And there's the top of the spill. And I'm basically pointing the light at the tripod. Really nice spill on this, good hot spot. Move the ACE beam off to the side here. And here is the through night. So right away you can see the through night is a much cooler tone. Bring the ACE beam back in. You can see it's a lot warmer. The through night does not light up those steel targets back there nearly as well. If I bring in the ACE beam, you can see them both pretty clearly back there. So through night, ACE beam, through night, ACE beam. All right, both of them have a pretty comparable spill in terms of size of the spill. Um, through night's a little bit smaller. You can see the bottom of it there on the screen. Whereas if I keep going up, there's the bottom of the spill on the ACE beam. So I take it back, ACE beam has quite a bit bigger spill on it. All right, ACE beam's on the right again, and let's bring in the Claris. So Claris, pretty bright there. ACE beam, Claris. With the Claris, this is much, much more of a thrower. You can see those targets more easily back there. Still not quite as well as you can with the ACE beam. So this is putting up a really good fight here. Um, the Claris has a much more defined spill area. You can see the very defined edges of it there. Whereas if I keep going up, the ACE beam has a much bigger one and it kind of just fades to nothing. So it's a very soft hot spot, whereas the Claris has a very uh, well-defined edge on the hot spot. Not a pro or con either way, just is what it is. So that's it guys, the Ace Beam L35, my very first Ace Beam, and it definitely will not be the last. So they did send this to me in full disclosure. I'm gonna post a link in the description below to where you can buy it. Again, at the time of filming, it's about $99, depending on where you shop. So more to come from Ace Beam. I appreciate you guys watching. If you did like this video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Oh, I know that's gonna bother somebody. I had a guy comment that he didn't like when my beard hairs were sticking out. So imagine when my little eyebrows sticking up there. All right. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button down below. Lots more to come. We'll see you on the next one.